Today's episode is sponsored by my patrons on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please consider making a pledge yourself. The link to my Patreon is down in the description below. Okay, so... People have been saying that all the videos released on this channel lately have been negative, and although that's not necessarily true, there have been several negative videos, so I thought I'd take a break from the negativity and make a video about one of the coolest movies that I've seen this year, The Invitation. The Invitation was recommended to me on the Brett Easton Ellis podcast. Now, Brett Easton Ellis is the writer of American Psycho and several other very famous books slash movies. I highly respect his opinion, so I thought I would go check this movie out. And it did not let me down. It is one of the best films I have seen this year. It is a dramatic thriller set in a very large house during a dinner party. The director of this film is a female director named Karen Kusama, who directed other movies like Aeon Flux and Jennifer's Body which I haven't seen, but I've heard are terrible. Have no fear, this movie is nothing like those films. It is an incredibly grounded, heart-wrenching, stomach-churning thriller that had me grabbing the hand of whoever I was sitting by at the time. I watched this with a group of friends and we were all constantly squirming and moving around from the anxiety. The characters are some of the best that I've ever seen. They're all incredibly realistic and fleshed out. The main character, um, who is an actor that looks strangely like the brother of Tom Hardy, is incredibly relatable and likable. You can feel this guy's pain just by looking at his eyes. He speaks in a soft growl for the majority of the movie, and that really gives everything he says weight. Just, just suck it. Every actor plays their part phenomenally. It is a really large cast of characters that you have to pay attention to and kind of remember everyone's names, and everyone gives such great performances that they stand out and are unique characters that you actually care about. Like, I cared about every single character in this film. They didn't all feel like they were written by the same person, and I really appreciated that. As far as the cinematography goes, this movie was brilliantly shot. It was a fantastic mix of long locked off shots, smooth tracking shots, and ultra crisp close-ups. It's the kind of movie that makes you want to be a better filmmaker. There's several parts of this movie where there are two scenes playing at once and the scenes will cut back and forth to create this incredibly tense, violent feeling of editing. One of the scenes is completely locked off a smooth and the other is like visceral, shaky, intense handheld cameras to give the shots very distinct different feelings from each other so you can tell that it's from two different times. It's a very Aaron sorkin -y way of cutting things where it's not really a flashback, it's a, uh, what's it called, split frames or, um... Uh, he calls them something different that's not a flashback. But shooting the scenes that way was really cool because it added this sense of urgency that you wouldn't have had without knowing the information the way they presented it. These flashbacks really delve into the main characters and show us who they are and why they are the way they are. And by putting those where they are in the film instead of just starting the movie with that, you're wondering what's going on the whole movie, trying to figure out the different characters' perspectives and why they are the way they are. It adds so much to the story. The plot is a fairly straightforward plot. Now I'm not gonna reveal anything from it because I want you guys to go see this movie. It is anything crazy original, but it is solid. Although the story is a fairly straightforward tale, the filmmaking is anything but. The direction of the screenplay elevates it to a whole new level. Honestly guys, I absolutely love this movie. Although I thought I was going to enjoy it, I did not think I was going to like it as much as I did, but holy fuck. It's impressive. It made me and everyone that I was watching it with incredibly uncomfortable. When it was done, we were all just like, what the fuck? It's not a crazy gory movie, but the tension that Karen Kusama was able to build is absurd. These are the kind of movies that should have large budgets, but they don't because we're all watching superhero movies. Do me a favor, instead of going and seeing Suicide Squad this weekend, which apparently is awful, I really hope it's not. I really, really, really hope it's not. This movie is fantastic, so watch this instead. I would recommend buying it on iTunes, but if you don't have the money, it's on Netflix for for free. Go check it out. She suck on a dick on the I'll be right back. Package. Let's see what's in here. Whoa. <laughs> Adding lasers to things does make it cool. Bobby Burns and 10 reasons why Batman vs. Superman rocks. 
huge letter that I will read, but not on here. Then what's, well, we have a, a rock, a triple A battery. Oh, another triple A battery. Oh, and a no button. I'm gonna use the fuck out of this on my Nope channel. If you guys haven't seen that channel, you should definitely check it out. You'll be seeing a lot of this on there. Let's see, how do I open this? Eh. Oh, fuck, come on. Open up, bitch. Yup, but the dick of this, but the fucking. You guys, no. huh? No. If you guys would like to send something and have it end up on this show or on Nope, the P.O. box is down in the description and right here on the screen. We have a fun time. No! No, 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 no. No! It's a wide variety of no's. Guys, thank you so much for checking this video out. You can hit me up on Twitter at the Bobby Burns and Instagram at Bobby Burns Official. And I'll see you later, guys. Peace out. Shoo.